second corinthians chapter 1 verse 11 second corinthians 1 11 you also helping together in prayer for us thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf for the gift granted to us through many thanks may be given by many persons of for the gift granted to us through many we have other trans Now to say you are helping us by praying for us, then many people will give thanks because God has graciously answered so many prayers for safety. But you also help us by your prayers, and I then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answers to the prayers of any. Where we are today. The result of many prayers or many influences. Apostle Paul said, I'm praying that as we have received the gift of God through many people, that many people give thanks on our behalf for what they have received. Praise the Lord. I should ask a question. Ask Paul. Yes, in Good job. Ah. My wife keeps telling me that it's it some of the last I use, but it was a eh? Okay. Praise God. Okay, let's see. Let me ask you guys. So, who was your most teacher from primary school till you graduated? Who will you say formulated your experience? If he made a major, but in essence of thought, Said, we won't. All of us are actually patients of many people. This one person you meet, met so many people, telling them, end of the three, having a lunch. Wife of this elderly woman said, No, when you were just preaching, all over you. Give me a debate. Another pastor said, No, 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 no. Sin wife. And a younger pastor said, No, no, I was just saying to the Bakari. And I was amazingly, all the people mentioned. I was listening to. They are all products of influence. Put together. This one person you are meeting to crafted so many influences. Paul said to help by praying for us that the gift that was given by many, this gift, this expression in your life came by the force of many, not one. Even spiritually, but so many influences, so many pastors, so many people have trained you for us to meet you. Meet you as a best person. Church, are you coming? I look at Paul. 
But things Paul picked from his father because they are not strange to him. For example, Paul never believed in the house without buying something. Not a teaching in Pentecostal. AC. But you don't see AC now. Then he had, he had so many things. You are a formation of so many influences. And Paul said that as we have received this gift by many, we are trusting God that many will give thanks on our behalf. That's when what it what goes into the formation of a man in God is so major. Some of you are God's going to be under the influence of some people for three months to form just a major character in your life. And God will move you to another set of people. God will move you to another set of people. God will move you that bring you music. Then it will take you from the person that brings you music to the person that brings you understanding, to the person that brings you um, imagination. And at the end, somebody is God's going to meet you. God that you are the gift of God. But that gift was formed by So today we are saying we are looking at a parable we call the dagger. Short, sharp. Red, red judges. Story. Judges chapter three. Verse twelve. We look at the dagger. A dagger as a sword like weapon, short. That's an handu. Then it has the edge, pointed edge that is sharp. Everything must come together. You know, it doesn't matter how pointed a dagger is, it does not have a handu of a grip. Might not be able to get trust it can Because God takes a lot. It takes a lot for weapons. It takes a lot for personalities to be formed. It takes a lot for gifts of men to be. But Paul said it takes many. In this Judges chapter 3, from verse 12, the Bible began to speak to us about the children of Israel. It said the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel. Because they have done evil in the sight of the Lord. He gathered to himself the people of Amnon and Amlek and went and defeated Israel and took possession of the city of Palms. The city of Palms is Jericho. So the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years. But when the children of Israel cried out, who was crying? When the children of Israel cried out, the Lord raised up for them a deliverer. He Healed is, was not raised because it was the best. He used was raised because there was a cry. A cry of many people. Some of you need to come to an understanding today that you are here today because many prayers have gone over you. Many prayers. It was not because Eud was the best person. It was because there has been so much cry. Israel. God had the cries from different families, from different people, and God summarized all the cries in one person. Think of what I'm saying. Like God hearing a cry in Bauchi, and God hearing a cry in Kebi State, and God hearing a cry in Bayelsa State, and God said, okay, I need, to, I need to do something about this cry. Then God looks for a man, and that man becomes the cascade of all the cries that, that have been raised in the land. See, sometimes when you look at yourself and say, you know, I'm just simple, I'm alone. Your parents told you how much of prayers they pray for you to come. So that you are an answer to so many desires. Your grandfather thought about it. Your grandmother thought about it. Your pastors thought about it. Somebody prayed about you. You understand what I'm saying? Your father, your mother, everybody was praying. Everybody wanted something. And suddenly, God decided to bring all those things together to form a person. And for you to think that you are so empty, service to what the answers that God has given over your life. You have an answer to the cry of many people. 
I, I don't know whether you get that. Get to a church. Your parents are looking for a child. But the pastor is looking for a prophet. And everybody was crying to God. And God looked at the prophet. And God looked at the pastor and looked at the parents. And brought the desires together and said, I'm going to form it in one. The enemy tells you. Children of Israel cried to God. God raised you the deliverer. It was a Benjamite. It was a left-handed man. By him, the children of Israel sent tribute. The person that takes tribute to a king. That uh, raised the tribute. It's actually, tribute is from many people. It's from the entire land. But it was chosen. Harry. Don't get what I'm saying. Tribute was their way of committing allegiance to the king. It was the cry of the land, but it was brought by one man. God said, the man that represented their defeat, the man I will raise to represent their victory. It was the man that brought their tribute. I will now make him the man that brings their tribute. God is a powerful God that changes people's lives. Are we together, church? So they all came. Anytime you see Eud, you are not seeing a man. You are seeing a nation. Anytime he's standing before the king of Moab, he's not representing himself. I hope some of you know that you are more than this. That there's so much behind you that is pushing you ahead. Because a dagger has an undo. And you must have a grasp of your past sometimes to understand your future. Because you're coming from somewhere. You are released by God for something specific. Are we together, church? Every time you see Eud, Eud is not just himself. So when the Bible says, when it got to this king, verse 17 said, verse 16, now he who that made himself a dagger, it was a double-edged, and it was double-edged and cubit in length. He fastened it upon his clothes on the right hand. He brought the tribute to Eglon, the king of Moab. Eglon was a very fat, very fat man, fat on the, the crisis of Israel. And when he had finished presenting the tribute, he sent away the people who carried the tribute. So the truth of the matter is I didn't go alone. It was the representation, but there were so many people that carried the tribute. And there were much even more people that actually raised the tribute. Are you following me? But it was the face of it. And he himself turned away from the stone images that were Gilgal and said, I have a secret message for you, O king. And he said, keep silent. Said, oh, let, let everybody go. One of the greatest mistakes of this king that he treated a man who was representing a nation as a person. When this man is standing before you, he's not standing. Sometimes when the enemy wants to make you feel very inferior about your life, it gets into a point where it dissolves your idea of so many expectations that are raised upon you, so many prayers that have been prayed for and isolate you until you think that you are alone and you don't know that you are an answer to prayer and that you are carrying the gift of so many people. Are you following me? That you are not here for yourself. One of the depressions that happen to a lot of people is when the enemy pushes you to a point where you think you are here for yourself. The day you remember that you are not here for yourself, that there are certain people whose testimonies are attached to you, it automatically gives you a sense of purpose. He said, I have a message. Uh, don't worry. Let everybody go. So the man want to tell him something that will get to represent. Tell your neighbor, I'm not here to represent. Myself. Say, I'm an answer to many prayers. An answer to many prayers. He said, I have a message for you. That one said, no, don't go. Then he brought him in. There was the message. He said, I have a message from God. I have a message from God who has had the cry of many who has raised me. Somebody say, I have a message from God who has had the cry of many and he has raised me. Uh, you understand what I'm talking about? Behind this presence that you are meeting, this person that you are meeting per time, is an, it's a cry of many people and a message from the God of heaven. It's not just an individual. The enemy wants to make, make us to have a sense of isolation. The Bible told us when the king had that, he rose up to challenge him. And when he rose up, the Bible says he took the dagger from where he has hidden it and struck it into his belly. It's so, so serious that the, 
the, the Bible said the yield, that is the andu, went into the man. That was the power that was generated. It was close contact. He just drove it inside. Because he was a drive of the cry of a nation, not of a man. You didn't get what I'm saying. The way he drove it was not the way he was feeling. It was the way a nation was feeling. God will change you. The way you will change speed and understanding of your life. When God delivers you from a false perception of your life as just for yourself, a greater force will be generated through your life. When you know that God is raising you to be a blessing to many people, a greater force will be generated through your life. You see, you are so limited when you are so isolated and you isolate your life as if it's all about you. Not just about you. Glory to God. Are we together, church? He drove it in. The man fell. Verse 23 said, He would went through the door, shut the doors, and locked them. And when he had gone out, Eglon's servant came to look, and they had, to their surprise, the doors of the upper room were locked. And he said, He's probably attending to his need in the cool chamber. They waited till they were embarrassed, and still they have not opened the door of the upper room. Therefore, they took the key and opened it, and there was their master falling dead. But he who had escaped while they delayed and passed through the stone images, I can talk a lot about that, and escaped to Syria. And when it happened, when he arrived, he blew the trumpet in the mountains of Ephraim. The children of Israel went down with him to the mountains and he led them and he said to them, follow me, the Lord has delivered your enemies. Now, when God delivered Israel, Israel never had an idea that their greatest fear has been defeated. Moab did not know their master had fallen. Israel did not know their enemy has been defeated. The only thing that remained, even after the greatest blow has been released, the sense of ignorance. The devil has no other power today than to keep you in the dark because power has already changed and whatsoever tormented you has lost power. Do you understand what I'm talking about? But it can keep you in the dark and that's why a trumpet has to be blown. It's called preaching. Preaching brings you to information. He had to blow the trumpet because until that moment Israel was living as though they were in slavery and this man told them you are already free. Some of you need to hear this morning that you are already blessed beyond the cost. So when you came this morning, all those dreams they gave you, all those messages they called you and told you, maybe this work is working against you. You know what I'm saying? They, it, maybe it was true five years ago, but it might not be true now because something has happened between those times. It's only that the enemy is keeping it in the dark so that you will not know. But when the word of God is preached, the entrance of his word give it light and understanding unto the simple. Am I making sense to somebody? He said, follow me. The Lord has had your prayer. I want you to tell your neighbor, say, the Lord has had your prayer. Some of you are still weeping when God has heard your prayer. Some of, still, some of us are still running around when God has heard our prayer because the enemy wants to keep us in darkness as though God has not listened to us. Told Israel, yes, follow me. The Lord has delivered your enemy. That cry you've been crying, God has heard it. When God heard it, God raised a man. May God deliver you from a false idea. A false understanding of himself. You are the answer. A cry. There's a cry. How many of us know there's a cry in the land? Children of Israel were in Egypt and their cry went up to heaven. Every time you complain, it's a cry. Every time you look at the nation, it's a cry. Every time you look at your certificate and what it can deliver, it's a cry. And God, what the God's pattern for answering cries is to raise men. That's why when you hear this type of message and you go back to just looking for a way to self-sustain yourself, you have disconnected yourself from the answer God has raised you to be. Are you following me? Most of us here didn't think beyond our nose. We think only concerning the moment and ourselves. When you make a dark it a healed the undo. How powerful and take a grip on that heel. Tell me how much of force can drive. It can be so pointed, but how many of you have some knife in your kitchen and it's so sharp, but the handle is bad? And if the handle is bad, you cannot even deliver the greatest impact with it. If God does not take you and make you see what formulated what brought you here? You can't drive the greatest impact with your life. 
I will show you about four or five things that is driving the trust of God. They are the answer of prayers of many generations. There is no generation like our generation that has existed on earth. The Bible said, we are the generation the Bible called a people whose end of the age has come upon. We are the people every generation was looking forward to. And you need to look back and take a grip and take them as examples so that you can drive the trust of what God can do with you. You know, you understand what I'm talking about. Now, the reason why I told you that is the dagger is because it's if you go to war, it's a sword. Put the dagger. It seems more empowered. One of the sense the enemy gives to us is a sense of helplessness. Sense that, you see, we don't have all the, we don't have what it takes. That we are the only one granted right to come into the Eglon. That's what's there. You are the people that the end of the age has. What you need is to have a grasp. You are close enough to deliver an impact. Listen, this is not the most Are you following this proverb? This is not the most uh, generation that is not advantage. We are advantage with so much of history. History is behind us. There is nothing happening to me today and happening to you today that is not written. You've seen every, every issue happening to you today as an example in scripture. If you, do, if you don't know how to take a grip of your dagger's yield, We not even know how to drive with the sharp hand of it. Fall in your hand. Say, God did not equip. I'm going to show you that the dagger is not long, powerful. Not the duration of it. But with the dagger. Not the duration of that. It's not the length of power generated. And for the power to be generated, to have a Strong grip. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 and 2. 11 verse 1 and 2. The Bible told us that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. Verse 2 said. For by it elders obtained a good testimony. And he began to speak to us about these elders. He spoke to us about Abraham. He spoke to us about Noah. He spoke to us about Enoch. He spoke to us about Joseph. He spoke to us about Rahab. He spoke to us about people. A lot of people who did great things in their land. In fact, by the time it was ending, he said, time will fail me to begin to talk to you about Gideon. He said, we have so many examples. The journey of faith is so documented that it should not be strange to our generation. We have so many examples of it throughout history. Why did God allow that? And some of these men were so powerful that when we read their stories, we can't even believe what happened to them. But in verse 39 and 40 of that place, of Hebrews 11, verse 39 and 40. The Bible says something that is strange. All these men have mentioned, he said, all these, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. They were the handles shaped so much. Do you know what? A hilt cannot deliver the blow. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses. All these had good, but they did not receive the How many of you will buy a dagger as a good? You have the edge. You can't cut through. As 40 told them, why? God having provided something better. Why did God provide their story? So that we can have a grasp of faith. But the end of faith is going to be delivered in the end of time through another generation. 
God has provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart. You didn't get what I'm saying. This, this Andrew of my dagger is the power is so powerful. See, see the designs on it. Then you take it and cut through. What's the is it useful? No. It's even still better to have the cutting edge and have a bad undo than to have a good undo and have a bad cutting edge because the purpose is totally deceived. Its, it's purpose is defeated. So the Bible told us that all these people died without receiving the promise. Why? God has provided something better. Why did God allow them to live? To give a trust to our force. Who? He has provided something better for. The problem I have today is that most of us here don't even sense something better is in our times. You don't get what I'm talking about. Elijah said, and when he was in depression, he said, Lord, take my life because I'm not better than my father's. God raised him. God said, I'm going to, in the book of Malachi, God said, I'm going to send Elijah again. And it came in the spirit of John the Baptist. And do you know what the Bible said concerning John the Baptist? Of all that were raised, born by men, nobody is greater than John. God answered Elijah finally, that I've raised you to be a better generation than your fathers. That cry he had in the Old Testament was what Jesus came to show us, that of all that was born by women, none of them has ever risen to John the Baptist. God always raised better and better generation. As time is moving, as successive generations are moving, God is always in the trust of raising a better generation. And we must be able to embrace that God has called us a people that something better is prepared for. We together. The Bible said this God has provided something better for us that we should that they should not be made perfect apart from us. So in chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 of that Hebrews, the Bible now said, Therefore, we also, come and say we also, we have learned their story. It's time to come to our own time. We also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witness, why are the witnesses, why are they there? God told you, Every time you run into a dark alley, a dark spot in your life, you already have enough witnesses to tell you that you can move forward. Which means nothing should stop your trust. You have a great handle. It's the problem of most of us that we never read about the people that have been given as witnesses around us. People that have been centered around us to push us forward. Are we together? God raised them. Some of them, the Bible says it was so bad for them that they dwelt in caves. In caves, rejected by men. Every time you read this, you see that God is always faithful. To prepare you that no matter what comes to you in your time, the faithfulness of God cannot change. You didn't get that. Therefore, we have a great, we are surrounded with a great cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and every sin which easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is said before us. Verse 2 said, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and then sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You have to look at somebody to get inspiration. You have to look at Jesus. Don't just look at Jesus. Look at all the cloud of witnesses. Are we together? Generate momentum through their life. We are a people that by the, by the message of God, we should not be discouraged because we have enough examples of the faithfulness of God. And I'm not even talking, when we're talking about crowd of witness alone, we're not even talking about Abraham. We are talking about even people who face the same situation you face and you know them and they didn't lose their mind. That's a great cloud of witness around you. Telling you, get a grip of yourself. Get a grasp of yourself. You can drive with a greater trust. Don't get what I'm talking about. But most people don't even use their cloud of witness. They get to churches. They, they interact with no person. They, ha, they, ha, they listen to no other person's testimony. They are so overwhelmed with their own issues. As though their own issues are the only thing. They have no grip until somebody tells them there is nothing happening to you except that which is common to all men. Somebody must come to you and make it so common. 
I didn't get what I said. Say, oh, there's, there's nothing there. There is. It was, it's just so common. Someone said so common. When the enemy wants to deceive you, it makes it look so strange. And some of you would think that you are coming with a strange experience. That's what Peter said. But Paul said it is a common thing. The enemy makes it look strange when it's common. But there is nothing new. See, can I tell you, God, the enemy cannot manufacture new temptations. There are only three things in this world from the beginning to now. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. She is it. When Adam looked, when Eve at the what? The fruit. And it was good to behold, lust of the eyes. And it was good for food, lust of the flesh. And is able to make one wise like God, light of life. He did to him, he came to Jesus. Showed him the glory of God, dust of the eye. Bow, and I'll give you all these things, light of life. Same thing. 6,000 years difference, he tried, changed it. What, I'm going to, what are you going to do? have so great a cloud. Of witness. You need David. Sometimes you need, you have so many examples. Can I? When Paul was talking in Hebrews 11, he said, Time will fail me. Faith has too many examples. You didn't get what I just said. It's not about Abraham. If I, if I can, how many of you have read He Hood before? You don't even know that's an example. Time will fail me to talk to you about Shamga. You have not even read it. He says it's in the Bible. But we don't read it. Time will fail me to talk to you about Isaiah. Time will fail me to talk to you. Some of you, we got so filled with it. We even looked at some prophets. We said they are minor prophets. You are too loaded with witnesses around for you to be depressed. If the story of Abraham does not fit you, the story of Obededom should fit you. There must be one story in the Bible that is as if when you are reading it. It's, ah, hey, me, Nina. This is me now. And do you know what he's doing? Anytime you get a grip of that, you feel like giving a greater trust against what the enemy has brought to you. But when the enemy tells you you have no grip, he says, ah, this is my story. You know the thing he tells you? He says, look at your father, look at your mother. Those are two little examples. I will show you more examples. Look at Abraham. There are certain things your family cannot capture, but they are captured in God already. They are captured in God. Are you following me? They are captured in your church. They are captured in people around you. We are f- surrounded with so much a great cloud of witnesses. So why we are not afraid of how short the dagger is. Because of how strong the grip of the hand. We know that if we have a great grip on that one, the length is no problem. You don't get what I'm talking about. The length is no problem. We'll be able to drive. You see, some, and that's what I'm telling you. So, anytime the enemy takes your eyes away from history, it's, be- it's beautiful for you to recount the histories of even your own histories with God. How many of you can remember how many bridges you've crossed? As if that this morning now looks like the greatest challenge you have faced. You have faced worse. Some of you. You didn't even know how you graduated. When you saw your name in graduating, just thank God. Just thank God. That's, it. That's the way your name is going to appear where you don't expect. God, is, God has given you a pattern to tell you, I can do far above what you think or ask according to my power that's at work in you. How many of you remember the first day you received an hundred naira that you did not expect, you did not work for, you did not sweat for? Somebody just came. It was a prayer in your mind and somebody came and said, I feel like giving you this money. That's the same way with billion is coming to you. Yeah. It's the same principle. It's the same principle. You see, you are just going to walk out and somebody is going to just tell you, eh, I have this project. Is he, does he have mad diarrhea? No, he doesn't have mad diarrhea. It's because it's a cry. Say, said, God, what's the meaning of life? What's the meaning of life? Somebody just came and said, I have one problem. Problem is your normal life. 
just describes it. Is this one? You don't get what I'm saying. Yes. God is listening to Christ. Praise the Lord. Somebody said we have a great cloud of witness. First Corinthians ten verse eleven, speaking about this great cloud of witness, spoke to us. Said, First Corinthians ten verse eleven. Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for what? Our admonition. Their examples are our admonitions. They are our motivation. We are a people that must be motivated. There's there's too much written in scriptures. You see, when you look at Joseph, you see a type of Jesus. A man who went, who was sold by his brothers, but he loved his brother and saved them. And every time you turn around again, you look at Moses, you see another type of Jesus. You see a man that went to Egypt to, 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 Egypt to pull out his people from slavery as Jesus descended into hell to pull out. But when you, when you think you have seen him, when you look at Joshua, you see another type of Jesus. You see a man that brought his brethren into their land and gave them rest. When you say that is over, then you see David. You, that's why he said, looking at Jesus. We, what he was saying, he's not saying look at Jesus. Say, every time you look at those men, it comes back to one message. The message that is in your heart today is called the message of Jesus. That's what you see in every of those things. God has, why is he repeating it? Why Joseph is enough example. He said, no, I want to flood you. By the time I'm through with you, when you are sleeping, you will just discover you are saying Jesus. You know, sometimes people say, Pastor, let's say you preached last week, is this message? Yes. You fail me. I can preach it for one year. I'm just trying to be creative to help you understand. We are helping your absorption. That's why we call it title. We can give no title. And tell you it's a journey of faith and it's still valid. You don't get what I'm talking about. Time. He was speaking about this. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Noah. By faith, Abel. By faith, the same thing. Governize all their operation. It will governize yours too. Yeah. These things were written for admonition upon whom and your own is to do. Last. They are just telling the blame. Generation that is by the last impact. It is your generation. Yes, sir. So many prophecies. That's why every time you look into the Bible, it says, and it will say it will come to pass. But now it has come to pass. You know, Isaiah was prophesying about about the, about the stripes of Jesus. He said, by his stripes we are healed. And when Peter was writing about it in the book of Peter, he said, by his stripes, we were healed. Which means we, so that we have taken a grip of that prophecy. That prophecy is not something to come. That prophecy is something that is. You don't get what I'm talking about. All these things were written as examples unto me. Because when we say that war, us, some of you disconnect. So unto me. Whom the end of the age has come. There is this end, it's the end time. That's why everything is destroyed. There are two things that happen in the end time. Double climax. There is going to be a summation of all the experiences of faith. A generation. That is what you should focus on. It's the end time. We rise against nation. Come against kingdom. You know, and we... we we look at it so much until we are depressed. We would put ourselves out of motivation into depression. And say, but he has a friend again. I am of the generation upon whom the end. And the end is good news. For the people who have faith. Because the end is a person. It's not an event. I am the beginning and the end. You don't get what I'm talking about. When you hear the word end, you know why it sends you to depression. You are thinking of events. Party? That type of party thing. No, but when you look at the end, this is what you come. It is fulfilled. When Jesus said it is finished, he's not saying I'm dying. He's saying that every requirement has been settled 
You don't get what I'm talking about. To generate momentum for you to drive forward. God fed people in farming generations. He will suggest example. Not like our teacher in primary school. Tense and unit. They said one, zero, one, zero. Hard. Two. Twenty. They bring exam. They turn it to thousand hundred tens and unit. <laughs> Many of you went to those such schools. Many of you didn't go. You have no history. If they didn't beat you in school, you don't have history. That's why when life is treating you, you say, hey, hey, go. see this is my hand. No recover. Cutting grasses. And it became powerful to hold the microphone. That was where he learned it from. Don't get what I'm talking about. Yeah. All those days, we became manual laborers. <laughs> School was, it was the biggest world I've seen. Until I discovered it was so small. When I visited my secondary school, I asked myself, what is school? And, all, and those days, we would feel like, lost in this compound. Thank God, God didn't throw you into the world at once. Give you step by step. You know, when you entered the university, it was the biggest world. Some of you lost control. A bouncing. I'm fast. They told you you are going to Nigeria. You will stop bouncing. You would have faced your studies very well, but you know, when you just look at you, you're learning at my feet. So you are walking around until your shoes started reacting. Then you now discover it's not really at your feet like that. When the lecturer just said, hey, there's class tomorrow. And the lecturer said, I didn't see your script. That's when you need that. <laughs> Is this thing really at my feet like this? I thought, I thought, you know, how many of you remember when they got admission, you thought you have won the lottery? And you know, my mother deceived me. Told me, pass your work. When you enter university, nobody will even disturb you whether you come to lecture or not. It's a free world. He said, he said, you will just walk your time. So I, I wanted to pass because I wanted to be free. Until I got to university, they told me you did not, you, you didn't make attendance. Ah. I said, they told me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord. <laughs> but we have enough motivation. I want you to say this word, prophesy. Say, I have behind me the power of a thousand years. In here with that. I have behind me prophecies. I have behind me too many examples of I have behind me power of a thousand years. What do I mean by that? Numbers 24 verse 17, Balaam was looking at Israel and he prophesied. He said, I see him, but not now. What he was saying is, this thing I'm describing is real, but the hour has not come. Daniel, when he was to die, God told Daniel, he said, this prophecy, tie it up. That is because it's for many days to come. Tell you, you will go and rest. But the generation will rise. Well, I said, I see him, but not now. He said, the reason why I'm blessing these people, and you called me to curse them, there's something I'm seeing, though the hour has not come. He said, a star will come out of Jacob. It's not, is it not amazing that the night in, was, in which he was born, a star appeared? Many years ago, prophecy is very accurate. A star will rise out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. It will batter the brow of Moab and destroy the sons of Tumult. See, you know what he was seeing? He was seeing this morning service. He was seeing how you will trample upon snakes and scorpions. And they shall by no means hurt you. He said, ah, they said, no, what type of... Revelation is this. Said, ah, it's not real to you, but it's real. I see him, but not now. But do you know what? For you, is now. Amen. 
Jesus will say, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of Man and leave. In 2 Peter, chapter 3, from verse 3 to 9. Let's read 2 Peter, chapter 3. Knowing this force, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lust. What will they say? They will say, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Life is not changing. They are trying to isolate your time. They are trying to make you feel that there is nothing about your time that is pregnant. Everything is Abraham lived and died. Married. Back to children. Happened to you. Married. What, that, what is the enemy trying to steal? He says that you are the generation upon whom the earth. It really takes that thing from you. Back back into of a people who died without obtaining the promise. So, so for this they willfully forget that the word of God, by the word of God, the heavens were which were of old and the earth standing out of the water in the water, yes, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. But the heavens and the earth, which are now preserved by the same world, are reserved for fire, the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget one thing. This thing should be in your mind. That with the Lord, one day, For so many prophets that went on that came to pass. And that day breaking, the thousand years of speaking. Hear what I just said? Yeah, and virgin shall consider. Lasted for two thousand years. You know? That one day was actually yes. If I tell you that you are living in the day that is prophecies of a thousand years, how do you feel? Do you count it? And that lived and died and waited. Brought Jesus to the temple and they brought him what they do for every normal baby. Every normal baby born in Israel must be taken to the temple. Simon came by this. This one is not a normal baby. This is the reason why I have not died. He said, Lord, now your servant can die. Because the Bible says the, the hand of God was upon him. The Holy Spirit was upon him. The Holy Spirit told him, you will not see death. Until you see the lost Christ. You will see that which has been spoken. You will come. And immediately so they say, Father, now I can die. I can, I can. I've seen it. I've seen it. That day of Simon was actually a fulfillment of a thousand years prophecy. You didn't get what I'm saying. I know you don't feel it. You are the fulfillment of a thousand years prophecy. Behind you today is the power of a thousand years. Do you know that even nature, the world has changed in the last hundred years more than it has changed in the last two thousand years? In the last hundred years, are you seeing the, the strength of technology? What is obsolete technology? It doesn't take two years for what is called cutting edge technology now to be obsolete. 5G. There are people already developed. By the time they are true with you, Paul will be in Shagama, will be here, we'll be talking. Um, generation coming. You will now hold the thing like this. And your hand will not be. How many of you remember those phones you carried with pride? Carry like this.
the days of Turaya. I saw one of my father's friends we carry his car. He will put it be at, at uh, the back of the windscreen. We will be looking at him. What a great man! He can receive call anywhere. The people are talking. You don't watch. So why? Such of it sometimes, yes, that is just producing intent. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. The car at the time smooth. There is no power. What is how did they call that steering? Power steering. What's powering it? There are cars you drive now with it. The obsolete. You are living in the age of, you are living in the year sometimes that is producing the result of 100 years research. And it's happening very fast. And as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. Don't get what I'm talking about. So sometimes many of you say, everybody's just rising man of God. Rising man of God. You say, everybody, only God knows. No. Because there will be so many. It's part of the fulfillment of this time. He said, the we pour. He said, even your sons and daughter, even your handmaid will be prophesying. It will, be so, it will not be so strange to hear that somebody prophesied. Let's go for prophetic meeting. Everybody's looking at pastor. What type of age? You are the people unto whom the end of the age has come. You should come into this meeting with a prophetic word. You don't get what I'm talking about. Like I said, that's what I said there. I said, it reminds me of somebody that I used to say, I had it in my left ear. What do you even hear in your own ear? He said, he had the name. He said, Daron. Then, then it must be a mistake. Check the Bible down. No Daron. Some of you just say, overhead this morning. Let us discover that there was. And by the time we had the baby, it was very descriptive of the experience. How do you tell? And do you know what? It's normal. It's normal. Some of you think, ah, Pastor. Yeah. Jesus said, as I hear, what was given to them was type and shadows of it. And they kept telling the next generation, he's going to rise. Moses, after he had made so much impact in Israel, looked at them. He said, a hey, prophet, like unto me, we God raise. He said, you will hear him in all things. He will have all answers. Truth. This is the only generation that has chance to have all truth. You don't get it. You know what, what it means to be the people unto whom the end of the age has come. Hallelujah. Did I tell you that you are in the age Girl, his experiences again. I wish I was in this. Let me tell you, number of angels that are in your own company. Hebrews twelve twenty. Delicate issue. That's where you live. Remember the night Jesus was born. Book of Luke told. That an angel appeared to the shepherd and said, I was born for you today. Somebody, a child in the house of David. And the Bible says, when he departed, a great host. So, it was only one representative. But what descended? 
Sometimes the reason why you don't see it when see what is around you. You don't get what I'm saying. But you have come to Mon to the city of the living God, to an heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable I have at least one. There must be one dedicated. We can't number them. Don't get what I'm saying. There is no dimension of population that can rise on the earth that can exhaust the resources of heaven. If you become 7 billion, God has enough. Lamide, follow Lamide everywhere and obey our word. Are they not ministering spirit? Send to minister to us. See, there are so many things we just caught. My Lord, where is my only come? Yeah, the angels assigned to it my journey. First problem is that you must be ready for the journey of God. You are not here for drama. Don't play pranks. You are not here to because you want to change here. You are here because you have an assignment that is a thousand years back. You don't get what I'm talking about. They are here because God has God had to alter a lot of things for today to come. You are in the company of an innumerable number of angels. Yes? Look at the company you are. General Assembly. The church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven. That's where you have come. So God, the judge of all. So the spirit of just men made perfect. That's why I said you. So no story of a just man has spoken to you. You are unjust. To Jesus, to God. The spirit of just men. To Jesus. Why is enough? Which one? Is it company of angels? Or God the judge? Or spirit of just men made perfect? Or to Jesus? Not even Jesus alone, the mediator of the new command. And to the blood. Jesus even stepped aside. He said, blood is different. Don't get it. Because he had to become the high priest. He had to become the lamb on earth to shed the blood and the high priest in heaven to take the blood. That's why there is a Jesus in Zion and there is a blood. I'm alone. No. The power of Destroy that sense of loneliness. That sense of isolation. That's what the enemy wanted to do with you. He just isolated it. He said, come, come into my inner chamber. He said, I am here with God. Here with God. <laughs> I'm not here to negotiate. Me. I'm here to tell you the cry of Israel has reached heaven. I'm here to tell you they've been crying about you. I'm here to tell you that the prayer your mother prayed, God had it. The prayer your father prayed, God had it. The prayer you have been praying, God had it. The secret tears have been had. I'm here to tell you there is a coming together of so many cries for your life. You don't get what I'm talking about. Nobody's praying for me. And I even tell you when nobody's praying for you. Spirit. Help it. The, our infirmity. So, with groanings. The Lord himself. Even if there is no man to cry. The Lord is crying. Don't get it. Your life is never without a sense in the spirit. It carries a weight in the spirit. You are not isolated anymore. Anymore. You are, he said, I will never leave you alone. I will never leave you as orphans. I will send to you the spirit of God. Are we together? Someone said, I'm not an orphan. So every time you are having a sense of rejection, a sense of loneliness is from hell. You are in the midst of 
honorable company. You remember that servant of Elijah? In 2 Kings 6, verse 15 to 17. When he came out and he saw the chariots, he said, my master, what shall we do? Keep quiet. Them that are with us. And I tell you the company with A story David read. Already a man. Man that played devils disappear. That's why I sing a lot. That's, those are my company. They will sing a new song. Oh, okay, it's a ah, song, song, song. Read a book. Song stands. We lengthen the day. But we are in the days where we shorten it. You already before? There is a Joshua that lengthened the day. We just cut it short. This word, if we leave it, it will surround it all. Except the days were shortened. The days were lengthened so that the enemy will not escape. The days are shortened so that none will fall. You don't get what I'm talking about. The days were lengthened so that the enemy will not escape. The days are shortened so that you will stand. That's why I know he that has saved me will preserve me. Not just now, but for every evil work, even to the day of his coming. Let them bring new dimensions of sin. Let them be sleeping with each other on the street. I will be saved. The day will be shortened for me. Before it becomes so unbearable, I'm out of here. You don't get what I'm talking about. I said before it becomes so unbearable. I'm out of it. I'll be redeemed. I'm not of this world. I'm in the world, but I'm not of this world. If this one seems to exist, there is a new heaven and a new heart. We are in dwell righteousness. This is the promise of God for me. That's why I'm not angry. Frustrate this nation. I will help you to review me. Every time we are helping Egypt in the days of famine, we are kids, we're still telling them this is not promised land. We can help you to become a great nation, but this is not promised land. He didn't hear that word. See? So that's why I said, I want to change that. They help them, they refuse. I am not of here. I'm not Yoruba. There is no Jew. There is no Greek. You don't get it. I thought some of you would be shouting. It is alien to be depressed as a Christian. If you understand what it means, it's alien. It's strange. I say, I say I'm not Yoruba. Sunday, though, it's not my deliverer. I'm a teku. I'm in the name of the rebel company of angels. They can't politicize this. They can't bite them. They can't bribe them. You don't get what I'm talking about. They're hacking to the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I was driving out this morning. I saw somebody brought a... Uh, what do you call it? A ball. Around my junction. I did, I did not even pray. Some of those things don't make meaning. They don't appear. They don't even appear on my, on my radar. Brought sacrifice. Some of you now, that's how you say, Father Law, all the intrusion that be coming to my estate, me, which estate? You think that's where I am? That's my house. That's not where I am. I am seated with Christ in the heavenly places. Far. He didn't say above. He said far above. Which means it should, there are some things you should be looking at them. They should become a distant like a dust. I just look at them. Nobody's just wasting a call. Nobody should have given to poor people. <laughs> I don't even understand. How can I be sleeping? That's why sometimes God does not even allow you to know that some people are doing some things. You are too defended. What type of deliverance? For this reason, God giveth his beloved sleep. The type of Christianity that does not allow you to sleep. I don't know where you got it from. 
The first miracle God gave to man after the, he, said, he told he gave him a deep sleep, took a rib. Stop this which will have marry. Who will I marry? You will not marry like that. <laughs> sleep. I am blessed. Whoa. Behind me is the power of a thousand years. You can't meet me and be cursed. I told myself when I was when, see, when I was a young Christian, you see, when you are intoxicated with the Holy Spirit, you look for some trouble. I was reading that they gave himself a wife in it. Of that wife is Asenat. What the meaning of Asenat? Desert, wilderness. A place that cannot produce. They gave him to a wise man. They who are too blessed, there is some problem. They will nullify it. Yeah. Don't get it. Do you know the name of their first son? Manasseh. God has made me forget all my toys. Do you know the name of the second one? Ephraim. The wilderness became fruitful. Uh, there shall be none barren. There shall be none barren among you. Not, not, of any, not, not only of children, but of anything good. I want this nation to change, but in case they are not ready, I'm not strapped. And when I say I'm out, I'm not even talking about Canada. It's possible. Some of you, God, you, just, you are global citizens. Some of you find yourself in Canada, others in Kathmandu, Kathmandu all on mission. Are you still ready? And then I said, all of you disappear. I said, yeah, thank you. I, I finally, the pastor has given us a leave. <laughs> Some of you are going to Nepal. I have a guy inside this room. Anywhere outside of Nigeria. <laughs> if you tell him, if you tell him, Jibouti, he said, is there money there? <laughs> but that's not what I'm declaring. Are we together? Yeah. But if they refuse to do it, Paul said in his word, in Famine. I have enough witnesses around me that, were, that live well in famine. Hey, today I deliver you from the excuse. It's, uh, it's COVID 19. Anytime you want to do something, it's a COVID in me. You are delivered. Amen. I said to you at the beginning of the year that there are so many things you plan to do that will not happen. But there are so many things you are not planning for that will happen. Look at that other side too. Because God will move on your behalf. Yeah. Are you following me? There are so many things that have happened to me this year that I didn't plan. I'm not talking about bad things. I didn't plan this one. Good things. Good things. Because ah, change this thing. It will happen. In the midst of COVID-19. COVID-19. I've had more partners during COVID-19. I've had people who God has raised for me. We are almost running up a school of ministry that we never had an idea of in January. It's so impactful. People are joining us from Canada, from America, from UK, everywhere on the face of the earth with diligence. You don't get what I'm talking about. There were so many things we did not plan, but God had it in plan. And you know, it happened without stress. That's another dimension. So I deliver you by COVID 19. Hey, you're right, it's COVID-19. See, no. None of you, it's not COVID-19. It's just an excuse. An excuse of being responsible. Anything is COVID-19. That's all you know, it's this COVID-19. But you did not tell us that you sold things for 5,000 that they usually sell for 500 during COVID-19. Are we still here? Those that are are more. Beggar is so short. Description of lifespan of man. Job 14.1, the Bible. Man born of a woman is of few days. In fact, sometimes the few days are of trouble. So many a times. Every time you are thinking about the type of impact you want to make, how many years are you asking for? 
Some of us feel like God should be giving us at least 200. So that we can. So some of us didn't under, understand the power of time. We almost clock 40. How many of you remember when you were 21? Some of you here. This fearful span of life was between 20. At self. I did that at 21. I have gone far. And I can even decide not to marry for nine years. I will marry at 30. At 30, I was not ready. Time is going. You understand? In Psalm 90, verse 10, Psalm 90, verse 10. I'm 90. The days of our lives are 70 years. By reason of strength, they are 80 years. Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. For it soon, it soon cut away and what? Fly away. There is something about life and time that the enemy makes it look like something that is just disappears. Some of you are beginning to understand how Getting old. I, that was my friend. Junior. Sting. Sometimes the answer for some of us is God, let me live a thousand years. That to be. God will satisfy you with this. But if you live a thousand years like in Methuselah, you without impact. You know what? I had people that had accident, they would say, my life you in my sight. It's true. You will see everything. You see your secondary school. You see your university, you see running around, you see each other, pew. We not see trouble. There are some sites when you see them, they don't leave you. Can you imagine? Sometimes you down the road, you are driving, and one guy is driving, and he just overtook you, and you are looking at the car. What a beautiful car. That's a way. Just saw the car. They've slowed down. Have you noticed? If it's for, <laughs> if it's for 10 minutes, you will first slow down. And after that, you say, well, thank you, Jesus. We move on. It doesn't stick. But you wish, I've never seen people that some such thing without slowing down. Because you first ask yourself, where am I? Hey, hey. Hey, you're daily low water. You begin, your philosophies will increase. Yes. And you begin. I come to there, you don't need a thousand years. You need the prophecy of a thousand years. See or eat. Oh, I know you, I know I love life. Some of you do as if you don't love. I have eternal life, but I love life. The Bible gave me a prescription how to live long. If you love life, use your tongue where? Well. That's why I don't join the people who are misbehaving on social media. Oh, they are going to die young. Telling you the truth. It's the first, coven- the first commandment with a promise. It was to honor your father and your mother so that your days will be long. Not to fight, fight serious cause. Don't be jumping. Just be talking. 
That's by the way. But even if it's a one, if one twenty years, till the dagger, it's a shh, it's not a sword. What you need, galvanize all I've told you this morning. Get a trust with the life. Because if you live a thousand years without looking at your prophecy, without looking at your examples. God did not wake up. It's time. You are the generation unto whom the end of the age has come. How many of you have ever written an exam and they told you five minutes more? What did you do? You know, say, You learn how to read fast. All those I can't read fast will disappear. I'm just and he died ten years. It was five minutes more. What would they say about you in eternity? Even if Jesus come to the so he say he use Peruvian here. That's what they will tell you. See, you have to begin to write a record now that will speak eternally. Not about the time. You only have to generate the trust. You follow him. You are 39, you are 31, you are 32, you are 6. I don't know what I want to do. And you are a believer, you have Jesus. He's the spirit of wisdom. Find a cause. Devote yourself. It's not about the length. It's about the trust generated. Write your book now. Stop learning. Ever learning. Never coming to the knowledge of anything. It's wrong. Preach your message. Run your meetings. Talk to those teenagers. Always add it. Add this plan in my hand. I'm tired of hearing your plan. Obey. I've always had the plan. To see, let's let's correct your English and your error. Book. Write the book, and you know it's so cheap now. No print. Put it on e. We download. Don't die. You have content. What was it? I could go back. You are not going back. Last birthday is last birthday. It will never be 22 again. You never, you will never be 30 again. It's over. Say amen. That's past. That's past. That you can do about it. You will never be 60 again. All of you that have given it out to one. The next thing that is happening nine months time is the second one. I've been telling you since Thursday, you don't believe. You will see babies. Afraid of the prophecy. When I got home on Friday, I said, I think. So when there is prophecy, I don't even understand. It's your prophecy. I'm releasing it, but I've released it again. There's some of you now that you'll be more that's by this time. See everything. This interruption this is his purpose. Let's generate trust. What time? Wasting time. Stop wasting your time. Stop investing in things that don't profit. Luke 1, 67 to 75. The birth, prophecy of Zechariah at the birth of John. Luke 1, 67. Now his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Spirit 
and prophesy. Say, Blessed is the Lord God of Israel. He has visited and redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophet, who have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies, from the hand of all those who hate us, to perform the mercy promised. The prophets of God started manifesting from the time the world began. Because God asked an attitude, say something before he brings it to pass. The Lord will not do a thing without first revealing a secret servant the prophet so Enoch the servant from Hadam was recorded as a prophet he said I saw the Lord coming I saw the coming of the Lord he was just seven men from Abraham from Adam there was yet no Abraham yet God has started speaking and do you know what he says Bible said to perform the mercy promised God is always promising. You know why? Able to do it. That's why he likes promise. He generates promise so that you can have faith. Even to do it. To perform. But in our days, they are not just the days of promises. They are in the days of promises performed. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers to remember what is holy covenant the oath which he swore to our father Abraham was looking at his child He's telling the child were the promised performed you are the oath kept to grant us that we've been delivered from the hand of the enemies by serving without fear. Somebody say without fear. In holiness, righteousness, for him all the days of our life. Somebody say I will serve God all the days of our life without fear. Why people can't say what happened to my tomorrow if I devote has delivered us from the grip of it that we can serve him all the days of our life and he's blowing the trumpet like he would believe the Lord has had your cry the Lord has promised has performed the promise the mercy was promised you know what he performed he performed a life that would be without fear so that that life serve God. Because fear what the enemy uses to castrate you. Since school years ago, God asked me, what will you do if you know you can never fail? No, I never fail. What will you do? You know why you don't do things? You know that that what happens you can never feel. What will you do? You not sit down like you are seated. This thing you call self-control and composure is fear. Tomorrow, tomorrow is a more suitable time. It's fear. When they send Jesus from fear that you can serve him for the days of your life we sat in at the time we didn't even know whether we were going to marry we didn't know whether Jesus was going to come before we married some of you are saying Lord no no not now not now then go come marry no can dance then you get there and discover that so and have you noticed that when you marry the next thing you say is let me raise my children we are going to inhibit what God wants to do 
permanently because you are afraid. You feel your life is never going to be. And when you raise the children, you say, maybe at the dates when my children are now enter secondary school, they are not dependent. Then I can serve you. You will not serve him. By the time you open your eyes, your ears are grey. It's fear the enemy has been using to keep us in a cage. It's making your healed to feel even privileged. You are the only Israelite that can enter the inner recesses of the king. But what they didn't know it was that it was a dignified prison. There are some dignity that are prison. Yeah, what I just have been going, people have been saying, Was it look? I said, Why what look like your promise? This is not the promise. You belong to God. When they told the king, I have a secret message for you, the king said, Come, come, come. He told the secret service, leave us, leave us. Some of you would have been calling him a man of power. He said, I reject this type of power. This is not my power. You didn't get what I'm saying. There are certain things people want that when it happens to you, you say, this is not what I'm looking for. I'm trusting the day that the day you hit a billion, you are thanking God, you say, this is not still it. You didn't get what I said. He said, my children are not serving God. This is not stealing. This, 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 this is not. Because this just dignified slavery. What else do you want to tell me? I have a message from God. I have not found life. Get the tribute. Forget the gold. I have a message. person I'm going to go back to. I'm not going to take go to him. I'm going to take the message he sent me. Say, I have done it. So if I bring tribute, gold and silver, but I don't bring the message, king of Moab will die. I will go back to God to stand before him. Who asks, where is the gold? What will he ask? Where is the message? Some of you, God is asking you this morning. Where is the message? Where is the purpose? Where is the message? Why are you afraid? The message looks foolish. Perhaps that God chose the foolishness of preaching to save some. Look so foolish. What is in it? Speaking. This speaking that will help us. It's not just speaking. It's the demonstration of the spirit. You have to look at the old dagger and see what is behind it for you to know his power. If you look at this mere speaking, it can do anything. it can do nothing. But if you look at the power behind it, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men but in the power of God. So I do not speak with the eloquence of speech. I speak with the demonstration of the spirit and power of God. Which means, you go back a bit to check where is this word coming from. That's when you know the weight of that word. That this is the word that can save your soul. Not saved by the corruptible things, but by the incorruptible word of God. Time to look back. Let me say two, two, two points. The Bible told us that he was left and then he kept the dagger in his right thigh so that he can easily reach to it. They are blessings of contradictions. Have you noticed that some things of pain and touch with others if you don't go through something? The left hand reaches directly to the right thigh 
God brought opposite things to create direction. The Bible says every high priest is chosen from among. You know why? When he feels their pain, he naturally is released to minister. Some of you, if you have suffered pain, when you see others, you know it. But God is not creating a city party. God is creating an assignment. Some of you, the way the right, left hand goes straight to the right thigh is the way some of you go straight. You, when you see people, immediately you can make a connect. You know why? What they say, half, you understand. One of our, our daughters here just put to bed and she said, oh my clothes, none of them fit me. You can understand because some of you that are not married. Then she said, I remembered my wife. That was the time. She would just have clothes. I would go, With all these ones? Then she would bring it down. Then I would be helping her pull the zip. I said, ah. Change wardrobe. I discovered that I need money. Then I'll tell her, don't worry, don't worry. Let's adjust this one. This one you can't afford. You have never been somewhere. Never understand it. That's why God allows you to go through things. Not because it's against you. It's because he wants to position your left hand to your right thigh and use the contradictions to bring out your power. Are you following me? Let me say the final thing. Who do you think, what do you think the perception of people will be about Ehud? There was a, there were some people Israelites never liked. Call them tax collectors. Because in the days of Jesus, KJV called them publicans. But the ones that were Jews, and they were the ones that were helping the Romans collect taxes. So the Jews don't like them. That was the perception Israelites would have had about you. You are part of the people troubling us. You know, many a times people misjudge you. It was the one taking you think it was Matthew, the apostle, was a tax collector. Do you know Zacchaeus was a tax collector? For God, I see you. I know your heart. Moab was so relaxed around Eud because he was to them a partner. And sometimes I even perceive he would have been so rejected by Israelites because to them he was an oppressor. But God saw his heart. God said, Oh, though they call you a persecutor and make you an apostle. God is always raising people that men don't expect. Because God weighs the hearts of men. And today he's still saving tax collectors. He's still saving people that nobody gave a chance to. He's still saving addicts. Because he sees a prophet in them. Are we together, church? He sees a song in their mouth. Matthew is an apostle. Paul is my servant. Is my chosen vessels. They are chosen vessels here this morning. They might have struggles. They are chosen. Chosen of God. Hallelujah. Finally. Why was it a dagger? Dagger. Easily be conceived. The reality of who you are. Is always very hidden. Are not a sword. In Joshua chapter 5, the Bible says Joshua saw an angel with a drawn sword in his hand. He went to him and said, are you for us or against us? You can't see a man with a drawn sword without asking him a question. I'm commander. But do you know what? He healed the dagger. That's why he was called a traitor. 
when there was a deliverer. Conceived. There is a reality about you conceived, but it's expressed in God. Do you know all the time he killed the king of Moab? Even Israel did not know. He had to blow a trumpet to tell them, you know what? Follow me. They didn't see him as somebody to follow. Yeah. Didn't get it. But there was a reality concealed in him. I'm praying today that the concealed person that God has called you will come out. Bible says when they looked at Peter and John, they knew that they were on learned men. But they realized. What used there is so powerful. The word they realized. It means it's not obvious. They didn't see it all over there. They realized they'd be with Jesus. It's a concealed weapon. It's not a sword. Why did the king take him in? He saw him as very harmless, defenseless, and wrought any deliverance. He can't do anything. He never placed serious attention on it. The reason why some of you are so ignored because God was hiding you. You can get it. Who does not love people to come around him? around you too fast, they would pull you off the track. Thank God for my elder brother. The other brother. His birthday is February 26. My birthday is February 26. He's a very brilliant person. No matter how brilliant I am, always trying to there for over for close Anytime we want to have birthday, they join our birthdays. We we'll do the birthday tomorrow. Something was dying inside of me. What's wrong with me? Why can't they do the birthday on my own day? They say, no. they say happy birthday. We we'll do the birthday tomorrow. The devil can use anything to run you into depression. It looked like he was going somewhere. People became my friends because of him. You are Shekwanda, his brother. Oh. I say, meet me, meet me. Don't meet my brother. I mean, there are people who nobody has celebrated you before. I'm telling you, it happens. Meet you for people. Oh, Pastor Mufne. Oh, God bless you. Meet me. I'm a psalmist. A psalmist. And you are angry. God said, sword, I want a dagger. Enter the inner recess of the enemy before it's revealed what you carry. By the time it's revealed, it's too late. You get what I'm saying? They have expectations about me. Their expectation would have derailed my journey. It's part of the journey. For some of us, you have too much expectation about you. When God is speaking, you can't hear. Hearing the expectation of people, you are a doctor. You are a doctor. God is always a friend, outcast. Go and read your Bible. And there is a place in your life where you are an outcast. Where it fits every other person than you. It's God's way. See you, That's the secret message. I have a message from God. He said you already has his instrument here. Not that I will say it, I will go away. <laughs> As I'm saying the message, happening. When you come into Christ Jesus, do you know what you discover? Purpose that have been prepared for you from the foundation of the world that was concealed from revealed. So it was in him. It was always there. But it was conceived so that even the enemy perceived it a bit. Do you know how much suffering he still allowed you to go through? Because he cannot, he just perceived. 
How much more if it was revealed? Do you know the troubles you went through just because the enemy perceived? Not because it was revealed. What more if the prince of this world had known? If the king of Moab had known, he would have said, seize him. But because he didn't know, he said, let him come. The guy looked like an idiot. Them as headless, aimless, but it was potent. You are potent. Come to deliver you from depression, from aimlessness. Come to deliver you from the feeling of hopelessness. I've come to deliver you from the feeling of I don't carry meaning. All those things are concealments. What did I say? Sharp. My mother told me, yes, again, I've said it. I said, of all my children, I will, you are the one that will give me the greatest problem. You see me? You are the one that have given me none. Dead. But when, I'm, when I started the leading, I looked like confused. It's concealment. 20 years, my father calls every day. I've been in 15 years. And it's no more For 14 years, I've told him, no. I've never had one. Hallelujah. And yet, I was the problem. Concealment. Kingdom of God. Even you yourself don't know what God can do. Try to deliver this body. Matthew 21 31. Last collectors are entering the kingdom before you. They are kingdom people. Healed, carrying tribute, is a kingdom man. By eating, look, said, even the task, even the harlots, you know what they say? That they are entering the kingdom before you. Like the king of Moab took without fear, didn't know. See the weapon. Church, I've come to help you this morning to tell you short so that it can be concealed sharp so that it can deliver simple generate momentum this morning do you know how you're going to generate it that the great cloud of witness witness it's not only bible story Witnesses include a man living who was planning to be the youngest VC in Africa. And God saved him. You know what took Pastor the way to the day his wife gets pregnant. First children said the, the pelvis of the woman had to hope now up, open now. The next time he told them that his wife was pregnant, the doctor said it's over. God used it to push him. Able to tell anybody, God, a He left the university. He pushing even now. Even the built mansion for some of you, you mentioned you will not stay stay. The one room. I was so angry. One more room. So that if I have a visitor, I said, Why are you asking for one room? I will give you a seat. I was not asking for a seat, he was asking for one room. When he said it, I know he said that. He said, I used to dream. Rest is it. That's part of your witness. 
So today, too, when God is telling you something, be laughed at. Have witnesses. But you will bring it to pass too. Because you have witnesses. Generate momentum. Prophecies that have gone ahead. But I like when God says it shall come to pass. And it's let me tell you the implication. It means number one, I can't die. God thought he's talking to you about 2029. He means that let them increase Boko Haram and Esme. We will be here. You don't get what I'm saying. When God begins to tell you, you see, when your child is 31, I will bring some. They bring to you. God is not, God is saying, add 31 years to your age now. It's one B. That's why God speaks ahead. So that you will not be trapped in the fear of the moment. This is not the end. There's somebody that it is hanging on you, a word that said, and it shall come to pass. Do I have anybody like that? Is there somebody that has made a vow that I will build a house for God? And you don't have now. It means you are here. Then it means you cannot be like this forever. That's the meaning. I've told you the story of Pastor Tune Bakare before. He was in redeem those days. He said for six months, Pastor Tunebakare will be raising money for convention. They have five naira. And one day he was angry. May you have two holy anger. Then they went to Pastor Tunebakare. Pray for me. And people have been coming to me this year like that. Pray for me. All the, I, we, will, we will stop announcing this thing. And then they say, eh, eh. That's it. Yeah, you are challenging God. They prayed for it. Next day he went to work. That day he was to take a car load. He was planning for his wedding. To buy a Toyota Santana. The day is going to come that everything you can't as treasure now, you look at it. When God said, Give that car, he said, hey, get My car, my car. Two that will be flying helicopters. I say, My car, my car. To build anger or play. Yeah. So he was going to Toyota Santana. He said, His boss looked at him and said, I don't know why. Give him money. I feel I should sack you. I don't have this story. Bro. I feel I should sack you. I don't know why, oh. Say, even me, I don't know. And he sacked him. Then he went back to Pastor Adway. He said, So you, this wicked man. I said, If you pray that God will bless me, they sack me. He said, Pastor Adway started laughing. Then he took the Holy Spirit to control him. He felt like. I give this man some point. Is it that your salary you want to be using to be other convention? God has started answering you. He said, he called his friends. May you have good friends. I pray, God, I'm confused. My wedding is three months time. They sack me today. There's no woman that will clap. But they will say, she's a good one family. go. go and watch you. Then they were praying, they were praying, they were praying. He said, and God told him, at your chambers. Then he told himself, I'm not hearing God. Because at that time, you have to be 10 years at the bar to start the chambers by law. And it was not 10. So he said, he registered it and called it El Shaddai Chambers. If God wants to disgrace himself, let us disgrace his name. He said, not my name, I will put my name there. And October 1 of that year, I'm Muhammad Buhari, head of state, said, private practice decree abolished. The first job he got was just working. Get somebody. Gave him five years' salary of his former job. Five years together at once. I don't know. He need to. I knew that there was God that was answering prayer. Are you sure you are ready? 
Some of you will come and knock me if I say God should shut some doors now. Some of you, there are some relationships you are in. Thick. You can waste time. He's going nowhere. But you are not, not so we are going to marry you. I'm not talking. I'm talking about maybe the person is online. Oh, yeah, go and marry you. Just give me dates. Are you following? But you come to say, that took about two years, no one more, right? In the midst of, we are saying something must come to my city. Yes, you just call. God. And I tell you, I, told you, I was in one years ago. Then one night, I had two different dreams. Succession. God came to the heart of the Pick this eel. He said, I'm taking you to a land out of whose eel he got copper. That's the scripture. Yeah, but when you are digging a heat that there is nothing, head, that is punishment. There is nothing in this heel. As I came out of the experience, the lady called me. She said, I'm not doing it again. I, I, I said, ah, are you okay? Are you sure? He said, you don't honor me. You don't respect me. I said, ah. She has never had this revelation before. I said, uh, I said, take, take my emotions were still there. I said, think, oh, but I was, I knew God has spoken. Years later, when I look at the journey, I might not be on this pulpit today if I was in that relationship. I'm telling you, I know this person, I'm not, our pathways were different. I would have closed my ministry. I'm telling you. I have a wife that wants to be joining, that wants to be a big brother. You know that my ministry has finished. It is of that order. It was of that order. God told me, if you dig this in, you are punishing yourself. There is nothing here. God will deliver you from fruitless labor. The one that will bring a thousand years prophecy to pass. God will orchestrate your past there. Lift your hand and say, Father, I generate trust to go forward into the purpose of God for my life. In the name of Jesus. Begin to speak and prophesy over your life. Lay hold on the prophecy. For every dagger, there is an undo. These words that we have seen, that we have heard, that our hands have handled of the word of life. It's time to handle the word. Handle the word. Barabo Sharaba Katalaba. Play that keyboard for me. Let it be loud. Let it be loud. Lambo Saraba Kanda Labosia Jerunda Raba Togaba I go forward by the prophecies ahead of me. I go forward because I've learned from true masters, I've learned from tested vessels. I have not followed cunningly devised fables. I'm following the word of God. Shalabo Kaba Generate momentum Take away that fear That doubt from your path My tomorrow will be better If the devil say how do you know He said, I have enough examples I have enough examples I have enough examples I don't need a thousand years here This is not my home by the time I'm 90, I've, I would have released an impact that would change the world. Because I have a thousand years what behind my path. They are pushing me forward. I've learned how not to do it. I've seen how not to do it. 
have seen how not to be foolish. I have followed them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. Generate a stronger trust in prayer. Generate a stronger trust in prayer. Bashanta bo sharata esira bo kalabotana. Generate a stronger trust in prayer. If they say, "Who are the people that excel? Who are the successful?" It is people like me, because the Bible told me that if I take it to the Word of God to meditate in it day and night, I will have good success. Somebody say, "I will have good success. I will have good success. I can't be trapped." The word of God is my meditation. Why will I not be troubled? It is written, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you. Every time I put my mind on him, I am generating peace in a new dimension. I'm following tested principles of the spirit. Proven principles. I'm telling you addictions can be broken. Jesus is a deliverer. Jesus is a deliverer. It is written and it is experienced. People are still seeing his hand now. I'm telling you, needs can be met. God can send people to you from a thousand miles away. He's still fulfilling his word. I follow the Lamb. I follow the lion. I follow the land. I follow the lion. Follow the land. Yeah. I follow the lion. I worship the lamb of God. I worship the lamb of God. into that palace that day there are two things that could occupy his mind great fear because it was a place very guard, well guarded and fear as his torment there are so many people that occupy you see if it is God go to rest this thing this thing I want to take Will he walk? Will God help me? Will God, he will help you. It is your type God helps. He will show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards him. That's what he looks out for. His eyes is running to and fro on the face of the earth. Looking for people whose heart is perfect towards him. It's my type that God helps. And because he, he just knew I don't have time. He just knew that somehow, somehow. The problem is, 
Even if you kill the king, how do you get out of the place? That could be. But do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says he passed behind the stone images. When God immobilizes your enemy, they stand still like a stone. They seem to have power, but they cannot move. Do you discover that he had gone long before numbers, before thinking, or called to the servants and said, The Bible said, when they came, they saw the place was closed. They said, Our master must be in the inner place. They were the one that gave him the escape, the, the chance to escape because it was his time. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The, God made his enemies still like a stone. It was what Moses prophesied in Exodus 15. He said, Pharaoh fell into the sea and became still like a stone. And you know what? You pass beside the stone, it can't stop you. You even look at his eyes, it can't stop you. Because God was making a way for him. Everything that can challenge you will stand still like a stone. Even if it's the law, you would have passed before they remember they have to amend it. You don't get it. They would just say, ah, what have we been doing? What have we been doing? But by the time they came to their senses, he was already out of the place. He was outnumbered, yet he delivered Israel. He, was, he, didn't have, he didn't have a sword, yet he delivered Israel. Because what matters most is God being on your side. Nigeria is not going to change because Christians are more than Muslims. That's not the, It is because God is on our side. It's not, it's big. People say, ah, we are going to lose this battle. They have four, four wives. Four, four wives. That they give, we, we are giving back to one, one. Ah, the most powerful nations on earth don't have one billion. You understand? Some nations are even begging, come and settle, come and settle, and yet you can't catch up with them. May your children not become refuse. Yeah. Some people, just sit there, they just have six million. And they are begging to feed them. God does not just raise numbers, He raises value. In your family, God will raise great men. Church, let me give you one story more and we go. Give me 2 Samuel 21, 15 to 22. Let me show you a history of giant killers. 2 Samuel 21 from verse 15. Look at this word. When the Philistines were at war again with Israel, David and his servants with him went and fought against the Philistines. David grew faint. Then is Benabor, one of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose bronze spear was 300 shekels, who was bearing a new sword, thought he could kill David. But Abishai, the son of Zariah, came to his aid and struck the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swore to him and said, You shall not go out no more with us to battle, lest you quench the lamp of Israel. We've seen one giant and one of the what? The men of David. Yes? It happened afterward that again there was a battle with the Philistines and God. Then Sibekai, the Ustite, killed Saf, who was one of the sons of the giant. Are you following me? Again, there was war at Gob with the Philistines. And Elnan, the son of Jared Oregim, the Bethlehemite, killed the brother of Goliath, the Gittite. The battle of David was reenacted again. Did you discover that the person who killed this person too was a Bethlehemite? That was from the town of David. And the person he killed was what? The brother of Goliath. The shout of whose Because let me tell you, sir, I called that, I remember one message, we called it the law of evidence. Nothing can be admitted as evidence if it is, cannot be proven over and over. What does God say? There are things that are proven, that you can prove over and over in party. Yeah. There's so many stories that will be saying the same thing. Yeah. Look at it. He killed that one again, whose, weaver, whose spear was like a weaver's spear. Yes. Again, there was what? God. And there was a great, a man of great stature. He had six fingers on each hand, six toes on each foot, 24 in number. He was also born to the giant. He, he defied Israel. Jonathan, the son of Shemite, David's brother, killed him. These four 
were born to the giant in God and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of what? He's four. Do you now know why David took five stones? At the brook. He only used one. The four left is what you just saw. There were other four giants coming in their history. God was telling the men of David, as I use David to destroy giants, it will happen with you. That's how you generate momentum. The Bible says one of them was David's brother. Who is your own brother? When you hear your brother kill the giant, we know he runs in your blood. You don't get what I'm saying. Say he runs in my blood. Say victory runs in my blood. Say victory is in my DNA. We've had doctor's reports. I still here. That's a good. They said my liver is. I said there's nothing wrong. I should not eat meat again. I said ah. So yeah. One of my mentors, Isaac, was eating it in old age to bless. He said, bring me venison. I'm not tired for I should not eat meat. Ow. I calmed down. I went to pray. I said, God, eat meat. I'll reduce it, but we must eat meat. Eat meat. Bad stories. I've seen people, they say you cannot have a child. It's in our network. When you, when you come into this network, you should feel a sense of sense of being impenetrable. Remember when Wale came to this town as Opa. Yes. But you see that he had great hopes. And when they are giving in church, he will say, he will not say, I'm copper. I've never seen him one day. Looking for how to live. Think that he didn't graduate with his mates. Should I talk to you about my company? You want to talk to me? Let me talk to you about people like Inga. There are many people that think he's a billionaire. I had one that shocked me. Nobody said, Inka gave him some money and he wanted to pay the money back. Nobody told him not take it. So I asked the person, does he cut catch money? Do you know he's not, he has never been salaried? When people serve God, he came to me years ago and told me, Pastor, anywhere you are going, I'm driving you. It was his decision. I would say, I would say, ah. We are planning. We say, don't worry, don't worry. And wh what time do you want to go? He will clear his table. Tell his boss. Think God. Think God is, does not have brain. You will be putting your hand in pocket. Join workforce. God is not a man. I uh, heard somebody say it's because of Nika's wedding. It's his wedding. It is his wedding. We prophesied it. We prophesied. We, we lay leg. We lay hand. It is his wedding. <laughs> but I'm not just. I'm talking about my company. Or should time talk to you? Should I talk to you about Eddie? Who we'll call me and say, "Look, is that lady?" Somebody asked me recently, he said, she has been with you for a long time. He said, she just married you at church last year. It's not, the, that guy is not about length, about trust. If she composes herself in the school of ministry, you would think that she has been in ministry for a long time. Said, that, those are the people we raise. This man fell by the hand of David and by the hand is his company. Everything that's worked for me can work for you came into this land, not, nothing. I was praying for some people who said, I, one of the things I don't struggle for is money. And I'm not saying this with boast. I'm telling you the truth. I don't have business. I don't have anything. But I, if I've ever called you because that you buy 500 that credit for me, raise your hand. I have angels. I live in an innumerable company. I said this. When I wake up, I said, can it reduce? Somebody will enter. I'm telling you. I know you don't believe it. Ask my wife. 
Even my wife does not know when I'm rich or when I'm poor. She doesn't know because the times are not clear to discern. You just discover that Chebis and people will be coming. Our host visitor. The way we'll be eating, you think that oh, these people have endless supply. It's grace. Some of you, you go and take house and all of that because you don't want people to visit you. Yeah, they are managing, but only there is he that scattered and yet increase. There is he that we told more than it is needed, and it tends to poverty. The saving caution, saving caution. Better join what God is doing. What are you saving? May the Lord rebuke devourers for your sake. That one is something you cannot do. When I was young, they used to, they used to advertise this uh, chemical. They call it DDT. Yamali 20. They use it on plants, on cocoa. Because you can get the best seed and plant it and have no harvest when pests come. You need, it's another major investment to have what it takes to rebuke devourer. Because that's what I do. You are so focused about having the seed, planting it, watch over it, but you can't raise, rebuke the. I do that one. Stop wasting useless money. It's not you, they will say somebody is like broke. Then you can say, hey, dude, they plan that, you know. People can't be sick strangely around me. I want the type of thing that will be making me run around. God has rebuked it. That's why I'm rich. You can have money and be poor. It will just be coming from one angle to the other. Ask Job. The Bible says one man will come. All your sons are, and before he goes, another will come. All your animals will feed And before he goes, and they finish with Job that day. For some of you, you'll be hearing terror only with from distant. You don't get it. Only with your eyes. That's what is called the Lord will rebuke the devourer. Just be distant. If you know how many people lost their job in COVID 19, you'll be sure. Oh, you are here. You are just hearing. They even increase your salary. Jesus, that's what Jesus does. That is, those, those are the four stones. I want to leave those stones with you. You can pick yours if you need it. Who needs it? There are people, 15 years, 20 years, by the time they are retiring, they are looking for a piece of land. God will gather your labor. Yeah. It will not scatter. Yeah. All of it that say, if a man does not have 200,000, cannot marry, you have not seen God. Which salary do you want to use to marry? That's why you are delaying your time. Then your thing will be 250K, only be 250 every month. 39. Uh, I said, God will help you. Yeah. That's all you need. When I say go, you take it, you snatch it. When I married, I didn't have salary. It's a real one way. And I'm doing a type of job you can't beg. You can't take up front. The Lord is faithful. He will show his faithfulness to you. But, see, this, I'm showing you this so that you too can lease yourself to him. And develop. Most of us are dealing slack with, with a slack hand with God. Who 
do you need? Who will help you? See your father. Your father is already expecting reward. Stand there and say, my father, my father. He's old. But God will help you. Yeah. Lift your hands and thank him this morning. That help is behind you. God is sending help to you. The help is generated by many prayers. Every prayer they are praying over you, God is answering it. Wherever they are praying for you today, God is answering it. Wherever your name has been raised for good today, God is answering it. Anybody that is saying today over you, ah, Lord, make a way for this person. I said there will be quick answers. They said concerning Cornelius, they said your prayers have reached heaven. Your hands have become a memorial. I prophesy to you today that your prayers have reached heaven. Your givings have become a memorial. Your heart has become a memorial. God will send you a man. He will send you a man. When the arms of Cornelius became a memorial, God said, go call for a man called Peter. He will tell you everything you need to do. Where you are going is not long. You are just confused. You don't know what to do. The man that will show you, even in your career, what to do will show up now. How many of you know, no matter how much you shot Jericho, there's always a window. Which means, no matter how hard the land is, there's always something to do. It's just you don't know it. But there's a ray up. She knows the window. She will say, go down here. That man that knows what you ought to do. The sons of Issachar. They had the understanding of the times and seasons. They knew what Israel ought to do. You are not left, left to guesswork. The man, the man that will tell you what to do is released into your journey. Hear the word of the Lord. You have prayed. 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 The cry has reached heaven. And God raised up a man called healed for them. Oh yes, I raised the man up. Whatsoever is shutting down that man, I destroy it. Whatsoever is limiting that man, I take it away. We raise him up. We raise him into visibility. We raise him into visibility. Mando Sarabatada. Yakaposata. We raise him into visibility. Your eyes see the glory of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Pray in the spirit. One minute. Pray in the spirit. Shalabodobo Satadaba. Mambrobokotoribagadaba. You have stayed around this mountain too long. You have stayed around this mountain too long. Turn upward. Turn upward. Your life will not become a body. The next space, the next step, I command you to hope on. The next step, I command you to hope on. In the name of Jesus. Alebo Sata. Alebre Kakusabradi Ata. Rabo Kobo Kadegea. Eriga Bokodea. Arabo Kadea. In Jesus' name. The man whose story will give you rest, you will hear that story. The man whose story will seize your agitations is brought around you. He will say, The God who is faithful to me can be faithful to you. The God who did this to me. I see those voices that bring you depression, I shut them down. I shut them down. But the man, the man, the woman. Whose story, whose life will be an encouragement? We raise your voice. The one who will say, you know, recently one pastor was talking to me of a lady that had aborted and lost her womb. And she got born again. He said he was, with, he was in their church. The lady, one brother came and said, God said, hey, look at the guy. God did not talk to him. He said, the brother said, he said, God said. Then he said, let me tell you a secret. This, 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 this have happened. And they told me I can't have children. He said, God said. She had two babies. You don't get it. The 
is a man that can lift up your head. Your ridiculous story will become normal. It's an assignment. It's an assignment. He said, I have a message from God. You have heard from men enough. It's time to hear from God. The Lord's voice will come to you. The voice of the God of Jacob will come to you. In the seasons of the night, in the walking of the day, the voice of the Lord will be heard. And they heard the footsteps of God in the cool of the evening. Walking in the garden, you will hear the footsteps of God. You will hear the voice of the Lord. That voice that will quench all your questions, it is raised up in your hearing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you. I feel like prophesying. God said to me this morning, there will be a lot of hearing. A lot of hearing. A lot of hearing. I declare this week a week of hearing. You will hear God. In a very unusual way. In a very unusual way. It's your season to hear. Your season to hear. Morning by morning, waking it up my hair. To hear. And I was not rebellious. Every morning, I command your ears to wake up. To hear the voice of the Lord. There will be no rebellion. You will be willing to obey. And the temple will increase. 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 Batanambro Tadia. Sharaboka. Let's suffer. So Satan address you in the life of anybody that is here. In any type of manifestation. The force that is against you this morning is so powerful. The force that the, the judge Eglon with the Bible says even the blade and the eel entered into him. It was too powerful. You are not going out with this person. You are not stepping out of this room with that same affliction and without them confusion. I judge every power of Satan. The power of the occult and darkness that is that is stirred around you. I bring them to judgment in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus. Somebody said the blood of Jesus. Somebody said the blood. Say the blood. Begin to say the blood of Jesus. Let the blood flow all over this place. Deliverances. Ashalabokota. Ebre bakapate botega. There's deliverance here. By the blood. By the blood. By the blood. By the blood. Salabokosa. Ibro patambre gidia sizabota. Jalegledo subronde katena. Alessia, Prometa Gobala, Dalobagadia Satana, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I bring you by the Spirit of God to knowings. Say, I see him, but not now. But I say to you, it's now. It's now. You see him, you hear him, you know him as if he's standing in your presence. You see him. Is made bare before you. The hand of the Lord is made clear before you. The hand of the Lord is made bare before you. You see him as though he's beside you. For his name is called Emmanuel, which is God is with us. You see him beside you. You see his comfort beside you. It is your now experience. It's your now moment. It's your now moment. It's your now moment. It's your now moment. Your now moment. Lift your voice and give him praise. Give him praise. Hearings all over this place. I plead the blood, the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood, the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. What do you plead? I plead not my strength. All over this place we plead the blood. Oh the blood. Oh the blood. There's an exercise happening here. I plead the blood. Oh I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Devil scream. Devil scream out. Causes are broken. Sure. Baroness is George. 
blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. I welcome you into a better experience. Into a stronger trust in the spirit. Your victories will not delay. Your victories will not be denied. Receive it. Marabo Kotaba. You got the Lord said, the fire of the spirit is about to just start burning on your altar. This is the moment that you have waited for to kindle it. It will start burning. This is not just about willingness. This is about the Holy Spirit. This is about his own fire. He said, he tried, he said the priest will put wood upon it day by day so that it will not cease. There will be a waking up. A strange waking up that is coming to you by the Spirit of God. For fire. It will, it will make you different. It's fire. It will make you changed. It's fire. It's fire. It's fire. Fire. In the name of Jesus. It's fire. It's the baptism of the Spirit and fire. Fire. It's a fire. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You will understand what it means to carry bodies of the Spirit. My God. Then He will now from the body give you an utterance. There is a release of an utterance. I sense it, it was from my inner man. I felt something came from. It's an utterance that is coming. It's an utterance that is coming. Marata Sebro Venata. Fire! Whenever you feel the enemy has held you, the Bible said they tied something, but they rose up and it was like those things were burnt by fire. The way the change will happen will be so sudden. It will just look like it is by fire. By fire. My God. Come, my brother, come. I sense the same pool. 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 I sense that pool. I sense that pool. I sense that pool. Egabosi attack. Come out. What is in you? I break forth. I open your fountain. 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 In the name of Jesus. I open your fountain. Masandebo Kandalabaya. I open your fountain. Fire. I open your fountain. I, I open your fountain. I open your fountain. In the name of Jesus. There is a fire burning. My God. There is a fire burning. There is a fire. There is a fire. There is a fire. There is a fire of the Holy Spirit here. It's giving utterance. It's giving utterance here. My God. Basanda lo sabradia. Raketenemo batara. Ilobreke do sabrande tade. Inda la batadu shiva. Even for you, there is a fire. There is a fire. There is a fire. There is a fire. Now, there is a fire. There is a fire. My God. Hold your hands. Hold your hands together. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Marcosa. Brikapa, Nato Kadobatan, Eruti, Ah, Sabrena, E Shadabate Kaba, Didolobate, Endo di Erute, E Sosevra, Eludabrando Kapoke Dediaba, A Shadabo Kabiata, Indre Dobaka, Elofredia, Adrea, wake up, wake up. There's a greater trust of the Spirit. Johnny Father, Johnny Father, there's a fire. That is a fire. Please, everybody, be in a sense of receiving. This is outside of this meeting. This is outside of the time. This is outside of the plan. That is just a fire. Baba Kushia, Pradia Taba, Kasuvra, Prade Shatabre, Broti Gabaha. Our senses are sensing. Our senses are sensing. Stomach upsets are healed. Stomach upsets are healed. They're healed. They're healed. They're healed all over this place. Bradia, reoccurring stomach upsets. Mabariadas, reoccurring stomach infirmities. Healed of the Lord. Let it burn. Let it burn here. Let it burn here. Let it burn. Let the fire burn. 
Don't worry about the time. Let the fire burn. Let the fire burn. Let the joke be destroyed. Let the joke be destroyed. Because your ears will hear yourself that the joke has been destroyed. You will know it when it happened. You yourself will know something has happened. Fire. Eud was raised as a deliverer. There is deliverance here today. It is your glory day. 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 I will see your face. It is your glory day. It is your glory day. Overwhelm me, your church. It is your glory day. It is your glory. It is your glory day. It is your glory day. It is your glory day. Silence, silence. Let the glory is going to go through this congregation. Glory is going to go through this congregation like a wave, like a wave of the spirit. Rabba Santa, Rabo Kuria Bashanta. Some of you are going to feel overwhelmed by the Spirit. Like you have never been touched. It's a glory day. Devils are expelled, sicknesses are healed. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Salabo Shadabahande Rabokoto di Baha. Arise with strength this day. Arise. Delight yourself in the Lord. And it will give you your desires. Desires granted. In the precious name of Jesus. Everybody that has second guessed your decision. You are healed from second guessing. David said, why should I bring the ark home? And God showed him that it was the wrong order. And he brought the ark back. Whatsoever has made you reject your blessing, you are healed. Amen. With joy now, you will carry what God has given to you. You carry what God has given to you. Receive with joy. Receive with joy. Receive with joy. Receive with joy. The blessings of the Lord. I testify to you that the gift of the Lord, every blessing of the Lord, every gift of the Lord is perfect. It's not no shadow. That's no turning. That the Lord has brought you perfection. And that what, that what the Lord has put into your hands is that which he has designed. Is that which has come from his intelligence. Is that which has come from his own spirit. Now take it home, share the spirit of the Lord. And you will see the blessings of the Lord. Raise an altar of praise around it. Begin to thank God for it. Raise an altar of praise. Then you will see that it is the blessing of the Lord. David raised an altar of praise. He raised the sons of Asaph to begin to sing day and night before the hack of the Lord. Thank him night, thank him during the day. And I should thank the Lord. Oh, it is written, oh, let the heart praise the Lord. Let the heart praise the Lord. Then the heart will yield this increase. Then the heart will yield this increase. It is your praise uh, that will change that atmosphere and cause increase to rise. Uh, and cause increase to rise. Increase will rise. See the spirit of the Lord as you change the atmosphere into praise. So today, the Lord delivers you from grumbling and from pain and from pain and regret and second guessing. And it brings you praise. Praise, 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 fill your lips. Praise, fill your lips today. Praise, praise, lift your hands and give Him glory. Give Him glory. Hali, hali, oh, hali, oh. have been given to the church mountains have been given to the church mountains have been given to the church
once again. Visions are restored to the church. For the church to become tabernacle of witness for the altar to like the altar of Jerusalem. For the church to arise, for the sons to be born, for the kings to arise, for the for the man to transfer, for the church to be perfect. And just get that song and just sing it. Don't worry. Just I just want you to be free. I want your spirit to be free. I want your spirit to be free. Is there a chance of getting that song? We just sing it once. For the king. 